Okay, so I think we can start now. So thanks for joining this session. I hope that you had a good coffee break with nice Japanese snacks. So, so today I would like to uh, talk about our work in, uh, related to the open source project in Antidata. So unfortunately, the title sounds like a little bit boring. But I like to. I will first introduce ourselves quickly, and I will try to focus on the latter part about some interesting projects we are kind of working on. So hopefully that will more. I mean, that sounds more interesting to you. I mean, attending this session. So before moving on, I would like to introduce myself quickly. So I'm Takashi Kajinami, and. You can find my activities in the GitHub or Launch, but I'm mostly available in the IOC channels in the OFTC. So I joined NTT Data a few months ago, uh, October this year, and my title sounds like you know the little great, but actually I'm a kind of the software engineer working in the cloud space, and now working in some project about the confidential computing. I, I will talk about that later. And my earlier focus has been in OpenStack. Unfortunately, it's not uh, you know the Linux Foundation project, but I have been working in the op multiple open source project, not only OpenStack but the other things like Puppet or Ansible. Mainly, the cloud and deployment framework uh, tools or framework has been my focus. So before we move on to the technical part, I would like to introduce how how we are related to the open source, I and mean, how entity data is working on open source project. So, a kind of I belong to the we we are the OSS called as uh, OSS professional services. So what we are doing is the we have the two focuses in the, our team. So the first one is the. A usual, you know, the technical support about open source software-based infrastructure, infrastructure technologies. So, uh, so I listed up several, you know, examples here, so like the so call Linux or Apache. So we have some, you know, the activities in the mostly in the Apache project like Hadoop or Spark, and also we have been focusing on the other core project like PostgreSQL or OpenJDK, and we are. Uh, actually providing some solutions as well as the support to the customer, our customers, so that the, to resolve some problems when I mean, using these softwares in actual, you know, the business situation or, you know, the production services. So in addition to the actual human technical support, we are also working on a kind of R1D projects so that we, I mean, the, and we be investing the a kind of new, I mean, emerging open source based technologies like Green Software Foundation or Confidential Computing, which I will explain later. So this is a kind of a chart um, which explains the, our, the kind of history. So we started from the quite core small part like, you might know this, but Tomoyo Linux is a kind of security modules in Linux, which was which started quite um, in early days and we I mean, expanded the scope from the core Linux security thing to the other, you know, the middlewares like the on the top you see several Apache projects like Hadoop or Spark or even Kafka, and also the PostgreSQL has been a kind of long I mean, the focus of us. And but an interesting thing is the Hinamos, which is a monitoring software, and we developed it and published it as a open source software, so you can use it with. Uh, in you can download this software and use it in your project, of course, I mean, if you're interested. So our core strategy is that so I think the open source is kind of you know the commonly used and the kind of a core for any business situation nowadays. But we think that very important thing is to not only using the open source but also contributing back to the open source so that we can sustain the whole ecosystem to sustain our business as well as the community. So uh, uh, we are trying to be a kind of a catalyst between the op upstream open source communities, open source technologies, and actual customers who is facing the business problem. So our 
main, you know, the activity is providing the open source technologies such as Apache thing or even PostgreSQL to the customer who is looking for, um, you know, looking for any solution, their big data business use case or high performance or high tolerance database, uh, database for the, the huge data. And also uh, at the same time, we are trying to contrib contribute back our warnings to the open source like we, if, for by um, the we submit any bug fixes we found during I mean, uh, in the real situation, or even we try to I mean, contribute back to any new features just to support the new use case, or you know the expand to so that uh, we expand the open source community as we was I mean helping the actual business of our customers using these technologies. So this is a kind of you know the promotion leash thing but, <laughs> but we have several you know contributors to open stuff so actually i i say that I, we worked in the multiple open source software but yeah we do actual contributions which is you know recognized as just being some core con, um, core developers so uh i think i should have said this in the beginning but you can find the slides in the slides so i think you can download it and read it if you are well interested. <laughs> so today, so I will I would like to talk about uh, our recent project. So as I said, we have been focusing on the very many projects. So there are several many, uh, there are several interesting projects coming to going on. So we are focus, focusing on PostgreSQL and OpenJDK and some Apache project like Hadoop or Spark or Kafka has been our focus. But in addition to these, I mean, the core technologies, we are trying to uh, also uh, expand the ecosystem of this software so that these core technologies can be more kind of usable and useful for any users. So I would like to, I mean, introduce this project. I mean, these are of course open source projects. So I will explain some challenges we are trying to resolve, and some enabler we believe from the open source project which we are currently working on. Now, also it, not only these core technologies, we are also working on some emerging technologies. So to I mean, realize a kind of future uh, use case. So I will also talk about this. So the first one is the big data platform management. So as I explained earlier, we have been working on several Apache projects like Apache Hadoop or Spark or Kafka, which allows I mean, the users to process data or collect data, huge amount of data efficiently. But that I think this is quite I mean, you know, usual. So the so the, this kind of you know big data processing is now very common. I think it was. It was a kind of, I mean, the cut of edge in a few, um, the five or ten years ago. But I think now people are thinking about the data, uh, the big data processing as a very, you know, essential and common thing. And these are actually but driving many part of the business. But the problem is that though there are several technologies you can use, but I think it's a kind of a the common pain point for the open source, some of the open source software, but the. Act properly maintaining the platform using this technology is sometimes difficult because, uh, so in the, for example, in the Apache project, there are several, in a soft, even the numbers of projects like Hadoop or Spark, uh, HBase. So you have to select and also install these multiple projects to meet your business requirement or even system requirement. And also you may, want to try, uh, you may sometimes need to install this from source by building the Java stuff. Or you might be able to find some packages, but this might not be really up to date thing, so, um, the which you cannot really use for your case. And also the it's because these services have several you know, cross dependencies, so you have to be careful about the version compatibility between these. And also, you might uh, there are several. I mean, the, some vendors might be using, providing the you know the good distribution, but if you are trying to I mean, load more and more component, then you might be able, need to 
you know, manage multiple vendors providing the multiple products, which is kind of messing up your whole environment. So to resolve these situations, we are uh, currently working on the project called Apache Big Top. So this is a project within the Apache and is related to this data processing, you know, project. But the focus is a little bit a um, little bit different from the core project, I would say. And the main focus is to provide the easy installation of these data uh, processing platforms so that users can more, more flexibly and easily use this. So in the, this project, we are, I mean, uh, we are building the packages. You, for example, you, uh, usual packages like RPM or dev file so that you can install these quite easily by yum command or you know, apt-get or something. Or even we are providing containers so that, that you can deploy these services more I mean, easily without looking into the upstream GitHub and downloading this code and building this. Now also in the project, we have several I mean, the test patterns and we are running continuous testing. So if you can find a set of a kind of tested version combination of multiple projects, uh, so you, if you download multiple, I mean the services like HBase and Hadoop, and you can get a tested set of version, which will help the users to select the uh, version to be installed in the environment. And also, uh, of course, these are all you know the full open source thing. I mean that's that's source and um, to create a build is open source, and also the these you know. This manifest to view the RPM or packages are all open, all open source, so you don't really need to care about the vendors who is providing this. So. And the second one is the data space. So this is a, a little bit vague, you know, the concept, but gathering more and more interesting these days for, uh, especially in Europe. So the concept of data space is for the data utilization among companies or industries. So if you are, if for example, the, if you are talking about, I mean, you're looking into the trans, uh, so some, uh, so this is quite useful and important for, for example, to gather the whole information in the supply chain, for example. So you, in the current situation, so there are several companies involved in the whole supply chain. So it is not really sometimes easy to gather the whole situations. Like if you were quite interested in the uh, energy consumption or some kind of the carbon output from your whole um, activities, and you have to get, you might uh, you need to gather the whole information across the companies or industries. But usually this data is stored locally in the individual com uh, company or industries, but the, this activity is aiming to gather all of this data in the central place. Uh, uh, not the central place, but to share this data among companies or industries so that we can get the output and analyze the situation more widely and correctly. The challenges with this is that, as I said, so data will be stored locally because not all, all data can be shared with the other people. Like some data might contain some privacy thing and some data might contain barely business critical thing. So if you were trying to achieve this kind of um, data sharing, so you have to be careful about the policy as well as, uh, and also another important point is to create a very consistent, you know, the interfaces between these data stores so that you don't need to implement a kind of one-off software to connect just data a, database A and database B and B and C. So there are several um, the open source projects launched recently to meet the, some, you know, activities mainly going on in Europe. And, but we will, I would like to um, list up the two I mean, the media work we are kind of, um, major projects we are kind of working on. So the first one is the Apache Camel. So this is more, you know, technical thing compared to the second one I will explain later. But the Camel is, defines uh, data flow between the systems, uh, data sources, so that uh, 
it, it can connect to multiple systems, consuming data and providing data. So this allows you to, I mean, uh, d define the flow from, for example, industry A to industry B, so that industry B can refer to the data of industry A to, you know, to make more um, the flexible and new business analysis. And the quite core part of CAMEL is the, uh, is that it con uh, controls a message protocol and the flows defined by roots. So with this, using this, you can, so you can define very flexible data input and output format, and also pro, um, implement some policies or data processing policies so that you only allow, uh, you allow uh, access to the only specific data you want to allow others to view, or you can even you know, convert some data or hide some data by data processing between the flows, uh, between the routes, so, and defines more, I mean, uh, like more, more flexible, uh, but a little bit secure flow between data sources for data sharing. The second one is, is a more you know, wider project, not only a single component, but contains uh, very many things now. But the, the, this is a Eclipse data center components. So it was initially uh, built for the project for the connectors between multiple data sources. But it is now, I mean, expanding its scope after the decision, I mean, uh, the uh, publication of the data space protocol, which can be found in the link in the bottom. So I do not expand details of it because it's quite a long thing. But there is a work to. Uh, they are trying to implement that the common protocol and the tooling to implement the data sharing based on these protocols. So these are both two open source and we are currently working on uh, the, in this project and making some POC and also doing some contribution back to this project. The third one is a little bit, you know, the more simple one, I hope is the database management. So as I said, so the PostgreSQL is one of the most um, most focused projects for us for a little bit long. But you, you know that database is has been quite essential in IT system, but the management of PostgreSQL is still, um, PostgreSQL or any you know database, especially the production ready database is still uh, complicated. And uh, as you know, that many cloud vendors like uh, AWS or Google or other you know cloud vendors have already provided a da database as thing, but these are not really open, so it's not be usable outside of their clouds. So we are trying to implement more open, I mean the, the similar but uh, technologies, but based on the open you know the uh, soft open source software, so that it can be used in more. More, more imbalance, like even in your own premise or some kind of management cloud. So to achieve this, so we are currently looking, uh, working on uh, the project using the PGO, PostgreSQL operator. So this is, uh, uh, as I said, so this is operators. This is a Kubernetes operator to manage and automate, uh, uh, automate to automate management of the PostgreSQL, Post, PostgreSQL running in containers in Kubernetes. So as usual, uh, Kubernetes operators, it provides the automation based on the containers. So you can run these in, on top of Kubernetes without you know, any customization. And also the very good point of this project is that it does not focus only on uh, PostgreSQL, but also provides several management features like monitoring stacks or any backup features or some additional component of high availability. So it allows you to build the product, uh, the PostgreSQL with management feature so that you can set up the PostgreSQL for your production very quickly, but and, uh, with the uh, easy management. So the last thing is the confidential computing. So this is the project I'm kind of working on. So I would like to, I mean, to talk about a little bit longer about this. So the confidential computing, I, I, this, 
did anyone in the room attend the session yesterday about confidential computing? Okay, so this will be still new thing, so I will talk about it a little bit longer. So the confidential computing is a very new but actively developed feature and technologies in the cloud space. I think the most of the mega cloud, I mean hyperscalers have already provided their own confidential computing, but this is still you know, actively developed, so you will see several updates in coming few years, I think. So the main, main the concept of the core part of confidential computing, actual objective of confidential computing is protect the data running on um, the in cloud from the cloud vendor. So if you run your workload and um, put your data on cloud and run your workload there, so you usually have to trust the cloud vendors because you have data there and being processed is not really usually encrypted. So there are several features like, so you can, uh, encrypt the data in transit, I mean, the, in the network traffic using the network technologies like IPsec or TLS, and you might be able to, I mean, the, encrypt the data in disk using the usual you know, disk encryption uh, features like LAX. But the protecting the data being processed is, has been, was not really possible because, you know, the data being processed should be decrypted to be processed. But recently, uh, there were several CPU chip vendors or CPU vendors for, uh, who, who provides a feature to hide the data being processed from the from the the host uh, at the host level, so that uh, you can keep the uh, uh, process your data on the um, on the hardware but hide that data from the other processes or even you know the people maintaining the hardware so the confidential computing is using these technologies so that you can encrypt whole workload in the cloud so not only the data at rest so data at the disk or data in transit which means the data in the network but it allows you to encrypt the data in use which is i mean the stored in the vm memory being processed by the CPU. And also, the other core part of the confidential computing is that, so you may ask you know, the, the cloud to encrypt your workload, I mean, they launch the VM with the encrypted virtual machine, but you do not trust cross, um, the, the cloud vendor, so you cannot trust they properly set up the, your virtual machines with encryption enabled, so you have to, you need some ways to make sure that or test that your workload is actually hidden from the cloud vendors by some way. So this is quite you know the complicated because you are running the workload in the remote that you have to make sure that you your virtual machine is running with the proper you know the configuration to enable uh, to be the encryption enabled. So to, ins to so the, there is another technology called attestation yeah, here. I mean, implemented by some chip vendors using the the very built-in chip processes, uh, built in even you know, the processors or any other chips to uh, to get some, you know, the fingerprint about the configuration or setup of the virtual machine to ensure that your virtual machine is uh, being executed in the secure the environment. So. So this allows you to ensure that your virtual machine is running with in the proper encryption enabled, and you can you, know, you can ensure that your workload encrypt your workload is encrypted and hidden from the cloud provider without you know trusting the cloud vendors, but only with trusting some chip vendors like AMD or Intel or other things. So there are several. So this is still you know, the new technologies, so that some of the features were already available in generally available you know, processors, but there is still ongoing work to implement these features within the software, especially the open source software. So the first project, we, so, there's, so I would like to uh, introduce several projects here. So the first one is Verti, uh, and uh, this is, this provides a kind of a tool set 
of the virtualized virtualization-based TEs. So the, as I said, so this feature is usually uh, built within the processors. So some many chip vendors like AMD or Intel or ARM um, and vendors providing the ARM has been implemented their own implementation, but they are kind of gathering to provide the kind of common tools between them. So the, the one example is the AMD SCV. So this is, this uh, we feel, we believe this is a little bit advanced, so we are kind of looking into this heavily. But the AMD SCV is one of the example of this confidential computing feature and it allows you to protect, uh, encrypt the VM memory as well as to protect the VM memory from host activities so that you can ensure that your data workload is encrypted as well as not uh, without any you know, injection or attack from the host side. So, and this feature also, this CPU feature also allows you to generate the attestation report. So this is a kind of the fingerprint to ensure your I mean, the, um, the, uh, execution environment. So with these kind of features, we uh, resolve these two challenges to implement the full you know, confidential computing cloud. So there are several other projects. So uh, there is, because this is emerging, so there are many, many projects being started. So the, the, the third one, my interesting project is the confidential containers, which is not part of the Linux foundation, but kind of in the CNCF. Uh, directly in the, this is not directly under the Linux foundation, but this is under the CNCF as a new sandbox project. So this mainly focus on this, the main focus of this project is the containers instead of the virtual machines. So there will be still some work about the, to bring these features to the, the container works, uh, container space. And then there is a project called Kata Container, which implements the container runtime based on the virtual machine technologies. And they already released an, uh, Simple fe um, a new feature with this kind of, you know, the confidential computing feature enabled using AMD SCV and a few other CPU features since three point, version three. And in the, uh, talking about the OpenStack project, I've been working in uh, for a while. So the open, just, uh, so the OpenStack is, I think the very common nowadays sol uh, solution to build a cloud platform, especially your private cloud. And it kind of supports a uh, very first generation of SEV enabled guests to implement the confidential, uh, to launch the VM with memory encrypted using the Libvirt and CAM and the, the CPU feature, I mean the SM and the SCV now. But this, and also I, I noticed I didn't include this, but there was a, uh, organization called Confidential Consortium in under the Linux Foundation now. And that is also another project also working in the several layers of the feed technologies to implement the whole confidential computing world. So this is not really yet reached to the standard, but the each vendor so you, each cloud services are implementing this and each some of the vendors are gathering to create a common open source. So we are currently also trying to uh, I mean, uh, bring you our use case to build uh, you know, the common, the av generally available and the common solution to build the full open source cloud with these kind of features enabled. <laughs> so I think I talked a lot about this, so hope you can find some of the very interesting, some interesting topics from this. So just to summarize the uh, slides, so the, we think the open source is essential for business and we have been, and we will be committed to contribute to open source to sustain the community oh, and you know, the real rights very interesting things. And as I said, so we have, our initial focus has been started with the core technologies, but we are trying to, I mean, expand our scope to, ex, um, to the emerging technology as, as well as some ecosystem, 
system improvements. So that will be a kind of very, I think that will be a quite good opportunity, recent opportunities in the open source world, personally. So that will be quite interesting for many others as well. And also, we will welcome anyone. So if you are interested in any of the project, uh, the project I explained trade. Uh, I explained today, so we will welcome anyone I mean, working or collaborating with us. So, and I hope there will be several other projects I didn't. Unfortunately, the booth is closed. I was about to say, please come to our booth, but unfortunately, it's already closed. So, if you have any interest about any project or related work, then please feel free, feel free to ask any questions or reach out to me personally. So, I think that's all. Um, because I didn't know much about your, you know, open source uh, effort, but it seems to me that big data and confidential computing is a big data is a huge uh, uh, interest for you, your company, and confidential computing going to be the new one. But we have because you you say that you are working with the customer and feedback to the community. Which, why you don't, you don't have any more versatile, you know, technology or solution based on the open source software, like security by default. Security as a big interest for the customer, right? But computation computing is a pretty much niche, you know, area of the technology itself. Why the LT data is focusing on big data and computation computing? Why other area, you know, imagine, you know, Kubernetes, WebAssembly, language, programming languages, anything. So that's my curiosity. Yeah, yeah, I think there will be still, you know, the, there are many interesting projects and interesting technologies in the world. Honestly speaking, we are big, well, but we, we, we were, these are based on our current strong strength. I mean, we invested earlier in the database, I mean, uh, big data processing. So we have several, you know, the members who is who have been actively involved in the community. So that's why we decided to make some focus on because we can properly maintain the group. I mean, the contribution group. So and also the for the cloud. This is so. The, the reason why I joined <laughs> entity data is when, you know, the, the, to make things smooth. But uh, we think that, so the, I think the very important thing is that we make sure that we have some, you know, the feedback loop and the good the involvement in the community to m use the open source, you know, technologies with, you know, the, with sustaining the community. So it's a little bit difficult to focus on multiple, multiple things with this balance kept very properly. So we are kind of focusing on these two, but then in addition to, you know, the, the database as a service, but in the future, we might be able to, you know, contribute and um, the focus on this with the proper, you know, the resource or human assignment. Please speak with Mike. <laughs> so are there anyone exist in your company who decided which area you're gonna invest or you gonna put people, engineer onto that? So, or maybe some grassroots, you know, bottom up thing? That's my question. <laughs> yeah, because we, uh, Although we are providing services uh, by on I, by us on, I mean we have civil services cloud services we we ourselves provide, but we are working with the customer. We our main business is providing a system to the customer, so we mainly talk with the customer to gather new requirement or pain pain points to decide the new direction. And the, our recent because we have been focusing on the infrastructure technologies upon entry, so the keep it, it, I mean, the, the focus will be within the infrastructure technology, but based on the feedback from the actual, you know, business field. Mm -hmm. 
So um, in the past, I was pretty involved in a lot of the projects that y'all are involved with, So, but in America. So I'm kind of curious. One of the common complaints, uh, at least, I don't know, four or five years ago, was that a lot of the projects that y'all are involved with are dominated by committers from certain companies. So like Hive would be dominated by Facebook, Hadoop had a lot of Yahoo, and I'm not sure who, Spark, Databricks. Um, basically, a small number of companies kind of have a stranglehold. Now, obviously, you have a number of committers and PMC members, which is really cool. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious, what has your experience been being you know, deeply involved in these communities, but not in America, not in San Francisco, not at Facebook, you know, in Japan, just kind of, yeah, I, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, I think the very key point, I mean, the very key point to have a good balance between the business as well, I mean, the, your own activity and the open, I mean, the upstream activity. I mean, I think the challenge will be how, how you, uh, the challenge is mostly about the, the way to have, a, you know, the good contribution as well as, the, you know, the relationship within the community. So I think the very key point is to share your use case and the situation very, you know, openly with the community so that, and also, you know, for example, to, so that you, they, the community understand what you're doing, then that will allow you to, I mean, I think the as an open source maintainer, I mean, I have been maintaining multiple open source projects, so this, so it, it's a little bit difficult to, uh, understand what, the, uh, what any contributor is uh, trying to achieve with just a single patch, for example. So it's if you know the, um, the use case and if you know the whole pain point, then you might be able to understand the use case as well, and you might be able to understand how we can collaborate more better. So providing, I mean, they're not only using you know, the open source in the local, but more actively involved with the upstream developer as well as uh, the, even the single company kind of maintaining that project. And also, it, it, I know that it's a little bit difficult, but deciding a kind of not too long, but the middle term or long term plan about that software so that you can build some trust uh, about your contribution in the com uh, community is quite important. So that to be involved in the community as a kind of core level or, in, you know, the to and uh, do more flexible things with more, you know, the smooth collaboration with the existing core members. I don't think it was, well, it wasn't not an answer. I mean, it's a hard question to answer, right? I guess uh, maybe a follow-up would be, in, in your experience with these projects, given the en engagement that you're describing, which, I mean, I think is is indeed what you have to do, uh, have you been able to get sort of, uh, have you been able to get features that you felt you really needed prioritized? Like, has that been an issue? Like, have you been able to sort of drive the things that you, like, you know, especially, I mean, Hadoop, Spark, like, these are, you know, pretty big, pretty important uh, projects. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so, yeah. We had some, dif of course, we had some difficulties caused by some, you know, confliction or conflict. So I don't think, I don't say that everything went smooth, but we did, I mean, the, you know, the, some of the priorities was successful, I would say. So it's a little bit difficult. So ideally you will be get everything you want to make in the, in the upstream, in the, you know, merged review, but, but we are trying to, I mean, we are trying to make it more smooth, but yeah, the reality is that most of the, them has been has worked for us, but yeah, even for us, some part didn't. <laughs> That's okay. a bit of honest. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I think we are running out of time. So. Uh, arigato. Um, just so quickly, uh, does uh, NTT have a uh, guidance for your top contributors on how much time they spend trying to help the
the community's general interest versus how much time they spend trying to specifically uh, contribute code that uh, might bring a feature relevant mm -hmm. to your customers? We don't have very specific guidelines, but what we are trying to achieve, uh, we, our main strategy is being aligned with the community. So that's the all. So th these are mostly dependent on the individual decisions, but yeah, we don't have any, you know, the numbers like 30% contribution and kind of stuff. But we are trying to, as a you know, single engineers, they are trying to be involved in the community and the, as a whole team, we are trying to be aligned with the community. Arigato.